Welcome to PK Glitz, home of Jammy Classes. We want to thank you for joining us today and also want to remind you to visit our website so that you'll really know what's up to date, what's hot and what's going on. And we want to remind you to be sure and get to the store where you'll find a complete line of all the products that you'll need for the classes. We've got a wonderful line of projects, cards, all kinds of things lined up for you this season. So, without further ado, let's get started. All right, fall is here, and we want to work on some fall projects, Thanksgiving in mind, all those wonderful changes of the leaves and the colors in the trees. And one of the things that I came up with was doing the painting on powder over the little emboss folder. I know you've probably seen this trick before, but what we're going to do is not only emboss, we're going to paint with powder by using multiple colors on top of that top embossing. For this, you're going to need a couple of colors of cardstock. You're also going to need uh, your folder, your embossing folder. I have one with leaves here, and this is the, uh, the Paper Studio folder. You're going to need your embossing gun, a brayer. I'm using a pair of decorative cut scissors to finish my tag off. Embossing ink, anti-static powder and brush. I'm using a craft knife just for a little handy tool later on. Uh, obviously your double-sided sticky tape to put things together with. And the four colors that we're going to use are Gilded Grape Leaf, Pumpkin, Orient Express, and New England Autumn. Let's get started. Okay, the first thing that we need to do is put our cardstock into our embossing folder so that we get our embossed pattern to work with. Now I did mine on my piece that's going to line the top and also on the card itself. I just folded it over the card so that I didn't get an imprint on the back, but I did get one on that center area. Now let's put that to the side and let's start working on our colors here. To get our ink onto our piece, we're going to use our brayer. I'm going to go ahead and do a couple of things first, though. First thing I'm going to do is prep my paper with my antistatic powder. So I'm going to come in, put my antistatic powder all over my piece, brush away the excess. We do this so that we'll get ink on the top portion of the embossing, but all the edges and the ridges down underneath won't get quite as much. And we might have a little bit down in there, but it won't be anything to speak of. Now once we've done that, I'm going to get my powders ready. And again, I'm using Pumpkin, I'm using Orient Express, I'm using Gilded Grape, and I'm using New England Autumn. All great fall colors. Now, we're going to take our pad, and it is very well inked. We need to be sure we've got a good inked pad, and I'm just going to run my brayer over the top of that so that I'm sure my brayer has some good inking on it as well. And then we're going to go over our piece. It might take a couple of times of you doing this for you to just really get the right knack of it. Uh, I, I did two or three before I got what I felt like was a, a comfortable amount of ink on my piece. And just keep turning it, adding your color on a little bit at a time. You can see how much we have on there. Now, let's get rid of that inky piece that's underneath. It'll just grab extra color that we don't need it to. And let's just start drizzling on our colors. I'm going to start with a little bit of the pumpkin. We'll let the extra just fall away. And we'll put that back in our little pumpkin pot. Then our next color, let's do a little bit of this gilded grape leaf. And once again, it doesn't have to be all over the piece, just kind of maybe in a certain section of it. That would be kind of nice. No two of these will be exactly alike. And that's grand. Everybody's going to be getting a very individual piece. Then we'll do a little bit of the Orient Express, I believe. And let that extra just fall away. That's really going to be rich and pretty looking. And then the last color that I'm going to use it's going to be my New England Autumn, and I'm actually going to put that all over the card. That way that I'm absolutely sure every little bit of that ink has got some embossing powder on it somewhere. Then we'll lift our piece, we'll knock off the excess. Oh, that's going to be gorgeous. And we'll get rid of our paper here. Now, 
The next thing that we're going to need to do, if you have some extra powder on there that you don't particularly want, you can take, we have a little clip brush, it's got a little tiny brush on the end and your alligator clip for holding hot items on the, on the other end. You can just go over that a little bit, but remember this is a distressed piece. So having that little bit of extra in there really isn't going to hurt a whole lot. But if it's just really important to you, you can go in there and you can brush away some of those little extra bits till you have it kind of where you'd like for it to be. I kind of like some of that little extra color in there myself, but that's totally up to you. Now once we've done that, once again I'm just going to give a little tap to get the extra off and now we're going to heat it. Now remember, when we work with our pieces and we use our heat tool, remember what we say, M&M? That means that when it melts, you move. So we're just going to stay here in one little area for just a second until that starts to melt. And then once it does, we'll just move on section to section all the way across. Doesn't take very long. Our powder keg embossing powders are the finest quality on the market today. They're a powder that keeps its color. It doesn't turn hazy or milky on you. We're always going to have a, a beautiful bright color with our our powders and they're wonderful to paint with powder where you can mix and blend your colors together I think that's just a lot of fun now let's be sure we got everything I'm looking sideways here to see if I missed any well there's a spot I missed we'll go back and catch those real quickly if I get the light just right I can sort of see where I might have missed a spot there we go that looks really good I like that okay We'll put that to the side. We're going to let that cool for just a second. And then as it does, we'll take a look at our card that we're going to be laying this on top of. And we're actually going to be, we're going to come in just a little bit from our size here. And the way that we're going to do that is simply by tearing it, tearing it with your hands. So after we feel like we're cool enough, that looks good. We're just going to come along, and I usually just kind of hold my fingers underneath because I'm wanting to take off about a quarter of an inch. So tear up towards you. That will give you, I think, the neatest look. Just keep on coming along. Just think about a quarter of an inch. As you get back down here, you can have a little bit more control. And then let's turn. Same thing. Start it out at about a quarter of an inch. And then just keep on tearing all the way along. We want this to have kind of a rough gnarledy look so it surely will when we get through here. Once again just keep that quarter of an inch going all the way along your piece. If you happen to get a little more or a little less that's okay but just think quarter of an inch and maybe that'll kind of keep you in the right ballpark. All the way along right down the edge just like so. Okay. Now that's going to be our piece that we're going to put right on top, just like so. Now, I've also brought a little bit of uh, dye ink on a sponge because I want to distress my underneath card a little bit. This has such a distress to it with the powder and also with that torn edge, and that makes this look a little bit pristine. So we're just going to come in. I'm using just a little bit of dye ink that I have off to the side here and a little sponge, and I'm just kind of sponging this edge a little bit. I know that many of you already know this technique. We're just going to just give it a little bit of a of a worn look. Okay. And that to me will make it match and go along a little bit better with the torn piece that we've already done. Okay? Now, once we've done that, we also took and we put a little message bar on some paper that matched our underneath piece. Now I'm going to take my decorative scissors. These are those wonderful little ones that look like torn, and we're just going to come in here and clip that edge real quickly so once again it also has that kind of torn look and then we're going to come right back here with our sponge once again and let's just knock it out too just real quickly get those edges where they're sort of distressed as well there we go now once we've done that we have all of the components for the little card that we put together right here all I did was add just a little bit of raffia 
I used my craft knife and I just made a little slit at the bottom and at the top and I fed my raffia through so it does go all the way through the card but that's okay. I tacked my little piece and my little Happy Thanksgiving with a little bit of double sided tape all the way along and there you've got a fun distressed Thanksgiving card. I just thought that was loads of fun and a great way using the folders, using your painting with powder, your wonderful uh, powder cake embossing powder, and then putting the whole look together. Hope you enjoyed it, that you'll come and join us again next time. We've still got a lot going on between now and Christmas. Bring a friend. We look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you for joining our jammy class today. Wasn't that fun? Be sure to go to the website and join our email family. As email family members, you'll receive jammy class updates, coupons, new product information, and much, much more. We look forward to seeing you again next time.